Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather rejoicing in God's love for us, but also aware of our need for forgiveness and for healing. We bring that to the Lord and ask for His grace. We came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, God to God in the highest. And, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give to all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christian, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and strive after all that does it honor. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, You shall obey the voice of the Lord your God, and keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment, which I command you this day, is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up for us to heaven and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea, that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you can do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You who are poor seek God, and your hearts will revive. You who are poor, seek God, 
and your hearts will revive. I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favour. In your great mercy answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn towards me. You who are poor, seek God, and your hearts will revive. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your salvation, O God, raise me up. Then I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. You who are poor, seek God, and your hearts will revive. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and he does not spurn his own in their chains. You who are poor, seek God, and your hearts will revive. For God will bring salvation to Zion, and rebuild the cities of Judah. The children of his servants shall inherit it. Those who love his name shall dwell there. You who are poor, seek God, and your hearts will revive. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You've answered right. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. and When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. When he saw him, he had compassion and went to him and bound up his wounds 
pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. Whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And he said, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know many students whose greatest aspiration is simply to pass their exams or degrees. Anything above 50% has been a waste of time and effort. They try to do the bare minimum. There are also Christians who only do the bare minimum, which means never being challenged and never leaving their comfort zone. They are the kind of people who might be very good at coming to church, but the practice of their faith is often restricted to Sunday observance, following the rules, and only the rules can be our form of Christian minimalism. In the gospel, we hear of a rich young man who followed all of the rules. Jesus looks at him and loves him, but still something is lacking. He poses a challenge to that young man. Doing what the law says is not enough. Jesus is not satisfied with the bare minimum. Jesus wants us to do more. He wants us to embrace a Christian maximalism that takes us beyond a simple requirement of law. We hear Jesus being asked, what must we do to inherit eternal life? And his answer is simple. Love. Eternal life means loving God and loving neighbor. What Jesus is advocating is the supremacy of love over legalism. He then gives a concrete example in the parable that follows. The Samaritan helps someone the Jews consider to be ritually impure. To those who simply follow the law, it made perfect sense to avoid this victim of a crime they were not responsible for. After all, the law did not compel them to help a stranger especially when the danger existed that they could become ritually impure themselves if they were to touch a dead body, or even worse, the body of somebody outside of the law, like a Samaritan or a pagan. We see in the treatment the Samaritan receives from the establishment figures of the day the triumph of legalism over love. I've experienced this most recently in the opposition of some Catholics to the pre synod process that Pope Francis has invited us all to be part of. Some people here in the Johannesburg Archdiocese refused to take part in listening circles because it meant that they might have to listen to the experiences or people they disagreed with. People like women who want their call to ministry recognized, or members of the LGBT community. In their minds, anything which might have challenged custom or law had to be rejected. And so are we. Are we comfortable and complacent? simply following the law? Do we hide behind the law as a way of avoiding the things that challenge us 
or make us uncomfortable? Or do we base our lives on the law of love? If we do, if we follow the law of love, then there are certain implications to that decision, such as loving and serving those whom we might look down on, or maybe who look down on us. Maybe an implication is placing ourselves in uncomfortable positions when we identify with those whom our church and our society rejects. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now come before the Lord, our gladness, with our prayers, our petitions. That those who shepherd the Holy Church of God will find strength in God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are discerning a church vocation will find joy in God's call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer from sickness and weakness will find courage in God's faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lack sufficient food or adequate medical care will find assistance in God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will find salvation in God's everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen the depth of discernment, the courage that faith generates, and the dedication to service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we hunger and thirst for your loving kindness. Care for us in answer to these prayers, so that we may follow your Son to glory and live with him in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, that we come to share in the divinity of Christ. 
but himself to show in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with these gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your word to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And as he once did for the disciples, so he now does for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. 
and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Butit Lakale our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may devote themselves always to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all people, so that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that the glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, 
we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, having consumed these gifts, we pray that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now on the love, the peace, and the joy of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.